Well, Pastor Crute, uh, first of all, thank you so much for being our host this year. We're here in Atlanta for Nehemiah Weekend. Thank you, man. Well, it's an honor to, to have you. You know, I really believe in Nehemiah, and uh, I believe that great things come from Atlanta. Ah, <laughs> so amen. We're amen. excited to have you. You know, um, everyone has just marveled about the excellence of the ministry and the service of, yeah. the, of, of, of your people and just, just the way that they just unconditional service. Well, they awesome. are tremendous servants of, of Jesus Christ. I think uh, the premium when we talk about serving is we find our model from Jesus. Amen. And Amen. Uh, excellence is not to be compromised. So we do our very best to put our best foot forward to make sure that God's people are served in the way that they deserve to be served. Now, Dr. Crew, you are the senior pastor of Destiny. You founded the ministry. Could you tell us about Destiny? You know, what is Destiny? And kind of, I know that you're one of the fastest growing churches, according to uh, one of the magazines. Tell us about Well, you know, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't put a lot of credence in that. But, you know, I, really, we've been here for 15 years. We came from Richmond, Virginia 15 years ago, just on a word from the Lord to say, uh, go to Atlanta, start a church. And in route, coming here, everything that we owned burned up. And as we were wow. watching uh, all of our earthly belongings in that rental truck burn up, God spoke to my heart and said, he'll take nothing old into this next move that I have for you. So it has, we actually came into Georgia with a vision. Wow. And that empty handed. Vision, empty handed, <laughs> wow. but a heart filled, ready to obey. And so it's been uh, a journey. Uh, we have enjoyed it. It has been uh, as goes anything that you're doing for the Lord. Sometimes we know what we're doing. Sometimes we don't have a clue what we're doing. But in the end, uh, we are very, very excited about what God has birthed here. And we call it Destiny Metropolitan Worship Church. Would you have imagined what has happened? Jeez, I, I could never have imagined. Uh, people say, well, this is a mega church. I never, never set out to have a mega church. Our, our steps of obedience was one changed life at a time. Wow. And that's really been our moniker. You know, each one, reach one, change a life, um, tell someone about that life change, and God has done what he's done. Isn't that the key to church growth, though? You it know, is. You're looking for a formula, but it's really about... It, it, it really is, and our emphasis really is, you know, church health, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that uh, people understand that their spiritual DNA and their spiritual formation. Uh, there's nothing new to this. It, it consists of worship, uh, evangelism, fellowship, discipleship, and ministry, uh, and realizing that it's not just about destiny, but it's about the kingdom. It's Amen. about the kingdom of God. And so if destiny uh, is growing, if destiny's health is where it should be, then the spiritual level in Atlanta mm. should be raised. Mm. Uh, there should be something about Atlanta that is different because as a church family, we're playing our role. And that's what it is. Mm. It's a part mm. of God's larger plan uh, to accelerate the return of his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Now, Pastor, uh, uh, several years ago, you decided to join, to uh, be a part of biblical entrepreneurship. First of all, what led you to do that? Uh, you were the first uh, largest church to actually do that. Yeah. And, you know, and so what led you to do that? And, uh, and so what's, what are your impressions of biblical entrepreneurship? Patrice, I think that if pastors don't get this insight and, and understanding, as a group, we're going to be left on the outside looking in. Typically, the mentality is build it and they will come. But what God is doing uh, in the marketplace, I think uh, Henry Blackaby said that uh, there is a move of God that's happening in the marketplace. Pastors have an incredible opportunity to help shepherd this move of God. Amen. If we don't see it, others will. We must accommodate what God is doing. I always say this, find out what God is doing and then partner with him in it. Mm. It's not expecting people to come to the church because a church is not known by its seating capacity. A church is known by its sending capacity. Mm. And in the marketplace, that's where the people spend the majority of the time. Mm. So why not equip them, give them the tools that they need so that they can be successful in the marketplace. If they're successful in the marketplace, then the church expands, the church Amen. grows, the kingdom of God expands. And so I just decided that I don't want to be on the outside looking in. Mm. I don't believe that this next move of God is going to happen 
within the four walls of the church. Mm. I believe that it already, it's almost like a tsunami building, mm. that there was a move of God in the marketplace. And I saw Nehemiah Project International Ministries as a vehicle to help catalyze that move. And so that's why I jumped on board. I said, you know what? I've always had a heart for the marketplace. I think sometimes as pastors, we, we get it mixed up and maybe we think that we are to be CEOs mm. or CIOs mm. or, but no, God has called us to the church. Mm. Jesus said, I will build upon this rock as he was speaking to Peter. When Peter told him, thou art the Christ. Mm. He said, upon that revelation, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The gates of hell not prevailing against the church is not us being in the four walls of an edifice, cowering uh, in a corner, not making a difference in the mountains of influence, or I would call the marketplace. God, that's an, that's an offensive, that's an advancing statement. The gates of hell will not prevail mm. against the church. That means we're moving forward, mm. we're stepping out. So I just said, you know, God, we want to be a part of what you're doing. And so as the kingdom of God is being advanced in the marketplace, as a pastor, my call, my responsibility before God is to make sure that the people to whom he has entrusted uh, to me uh, are equipped to make a difference in the marketplace. And so that's why we're a part. Wow. Amen. You've, you've gone through biblical entrepreneurship. You've thought of yourself. What's yeah. your impression of that as you speak with other pastors? You know, I haven't seen a curriculum like it. And I think um, as when we do, I talk about BE1, of course, we're talking about the principles. It's important to understand the principles, mm. uh, which would lead you to BE2, mm. which we talk about uh, the practices mm. of biblical entrepreneurship. And then, of mm. course, BE3 deals with the planning. Mm. Well, you can't do the planning or the practice until you understand the principles. Amen. So each class builds upon uh, the other. And when you come out of BE3, which is dealing with the uh, planning, then you have, you have the makings of a kingdom business that God, that you know, has within it all three components. And now it's just a step of obedience to strategically place that kingdom business in the streams of the marketplace Amen. so that it can do what God has purposed for it to do. And I also believe that you know, when we talk about discipleship, mm. a lot of times we relegate discipleship to Sunday school classes or mm. small groups. Mm. But kingdom businesses or business as mission, as we understand it, is just another way that God has given uh, kingdom-minded people who have business as a, uh, as a life calling, because there is no difference, I don't believe, between my calling and the calling of a person who's, who's in business. We have made a, a difference. We have divided between the sacred and the secular. Mm. And I just don't believe, I believe that it's one. When you're saved, it's all sacred. Amen. Whether you're Amen. in the four walls of a church doing what we call traditional full-time ministry mm. or whether you're in the marketplace doing full-time ministry. It's both full-time ministry because you're a full-time Christian 24-7. <laughs> so there is no distinction. What a There's revelation. No, that's right. There's no <laughs> compartmentalization. It's I'm a full-time Christian. So if I'm in the marketplace, I can use the values of my business. I can use the ethics that is employed in my business to disciple those who are working in my business, uh, treat them as the Lord would treat them, uh, and, and bring their families Amen. into a vision of discipleship mm. through the exchange of goods and services, mm. through an entity that God has given. Mm. So, that's exciting, man. Mm. I mean, how could you not be excited about fulfilling the Great Commission mm. through business? Mm. It's, it's amazing. So as a pastor, that gets me excited to know that, wow, God, I'm a part of what you're doing. It's nothing old. Jesus said, go into all the world mm. and make disciples of nations. Well, we can start right where we are. Amen. When he made this statement, he said, Jerusalem, mm. Samaria, mm and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So Atlanta 
This is my Jerusalem. Mm. And speaking of Atlanta, you are our exclusive distributor here in Atlanta, kind of the gatekeeper in helping us really facilitate Maccabees ministry here. What is your vision for Atlanta and Georgia? Well, I believe that if God is, if this is what he's doing globally, then certainly locally we want that to be a mirrored reflection of what God is doing around the world. Mm. If God is going to use business, uh, the reason that I got involved and became an area uh, distributor is because I knew that if Atlanta's going to be taken, if this is the way he was going to do it, I wanted to play a role in that. Mm. So we see Atlanta becoming um, a marketplace option for the Holy Spirit to move, for him to disciple, for there to be outreach, for there to be connection, for there to be growth, for there mm. to be uh, service. And if we can do that, then we can honor Jesus Christ. We want to have a, a business development center mm. uh, here uh, in Atlanta that will help serve the entrepreneurs uh, that God is raising up. And so our vision is to, to have just that, where we have resources, uh, we have relationships, we can leverage relationships. Eventually, uh, of course, we believe that we'll have um, you know, angel uh, capitalists or, mm. or, or people who are called by God to help fund mm. some of the uh, business ideas. We want to have a business incubator mm. uh, here, all the while teaching and equipping people how to fish instead of giving them a fish mm, amen. for a day. So it becomes very, very... And Atlanta is such a hubbed for entrepreneurs. Oh, it is. I mean, you know, they say man, anything can work in, uh, in Atlanta. <laughs> it's, it's the city too busy to hate. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that really is true. I, I believe that if that's the case, then we believe that the time is right. We believe that the positioning is right. We believe that marketplace ministry is one of the vehicles that is going to help usher in the return of Jesus Christ. For the pastors who are watching us, what would you say to them as they consider whether or not to bring this program to their church or into their, into their communities? Well, I think for a pastor that would be watching this right now who says, well, you know, I just don't know about mixing church and business, um, all you have to do is study the New Testament. My Lord. When you look at Jesus' impact, uh, the majority of his ministry happened in the marketplace. So mm -hmm. if we said we want to be like him, let's, let's look at what kind of impact he had. When you look at the number of miracles that took place, they didn't take place in the temple. They mm -hmm. didn't take place in the synagogue. Mm -hmm. They took place as Jesus was in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So f for a pastor, I would say at least consider it because it would liberate the people to whom he or she is preaching every Sunday to know that a pastor, first of all, uh, has vision for people that may feel like they don't fit in the church. Maybe they aren't ushering. Maybe they don't sing in the choir. Maybe they don't serve as trustees. But if the church can have a vision for where people spend the majority of their time, mm. it liberates them and it helps them to understand that, wow, I do fit here in the local church because I'm being equipped by my leaders in the local church so that I can be a minister in the marketplace. Wow. Thank you, Pastor. Sir. Uh.